Okay, this lesson I'm going to go over these is sort of a summary of everything I've just talked about real quick. This is the to hammer it all home. And then in the next uh, video, I'm going to go into uh, renal impairment in pharmacokinetics. And then in the final lesson, I'm just going to cover the basics of pharmacodynamics, the things that you need to know before you know anything else. So the first thing is it takes about four half-lives for a to approach a new steady state. So if you're starting a dose, starting a, a new drug, so let's say we're starting a new drug and we're going up to this steady state, it will take about four half-lives to get to this steady state. It would take four half-lives to get to this steady state. Another option is that you could give a loading dose. A loading dose, you're already at that steady state. If you gave a loading dose and you wanted to come back down to this steady state, but you were giving your uh, regular uh, maintenance dose in that process, it would take about four to five half-lives. Anytime you change the dose, it's going to take about four to five half-lives to get to the new dose. And if you quit the dose altogether, it'll take about four to five half-lives to get down to a zero concentration. Okay, so this slide uh, is going to cover all of the summary of all the concepts we covered and the equations that we got from those concepts. So the concept, the first concept, the rate law, the first order rate law, rate is equal to Ka, or the natural log of a concentration is equal to the natural log of the concentration of that at, some t at time zero minus k times the time that has passed. And so we say, what is k? k is equal to the clearance over the volume of distribution. That is what k is. k is the clearance over the volume of distribution. A is the drug concentration. Sometimes you'll see it as uh, a drug with uh, print the, the bars around it, or sometimes you'll see it as a C. What is the input? Input over time is equal to the drug times the fra bioavailable fraction times the number of doses over time which is equal to the dose times the fraction over the dosing interval. This is the equal to the dosing rate times the bioavailable fraction. So just remember that the input, the input is the dosing rate times the bioavailable fraction times time. And dosing rate is basically just saying the dose, the dose over time. Or in other words, the dose over the dosing interval. That is the dosing rate, and so when we multiply it by time and uh, by the fact, then you get the total mass that's been input. The output over time, output, so if you take concentration, multiply it by volume, you get mass. So the concentration times the volume divided by time, that's the output over time. So the concentration would be the concentration steady state. The volume is the clearance rate. And that actually tells me volume over time. And when I multiply that by time, that cancels out the time values. At steady state concentration, output equals input. That means that the dosing rate times the bioavailable fraction equals the clearance times the concentration at steady state. Lastly, the concept, at low substrate concentrations, the liver models first order metabolism. At high substrate concentrations, the liver models zeroth order metabolism. So we can say that the rate is equal to Vmax over Km times C, when C is low, or rate is equal to Vmax when C is high. Next, the thing to remember, how do you calculate the volume of distribution? Well, if you know the concentration at time zero, and you know the mass that was added, if you know, like if you gave someone an injection, and you immediately took and saw what their concentration was at time zero, then you can calculate the volume of distribution. But sometimes that doesn't work, because remember that the concentration at time zero, if there's a distribution phase, we have to you basically extrapolate backwards on that, on that phase graph, to figure out what the concentration was at time zero, so just remember that as well. What I mean, remember that there's a graph and that it, if it's falling rapidly and then it stretches out, then that rapid fall is equal to my distribution phase. And so if I extrapolate backwards to time zero, then I know what my concentration was at time zero. The bioavailable fraction, that's the area under the curve for an injection divided by the area under the curve for a pill. And a couple of parameters that are important when you're talking about a pill or enteral dosing are the time to peak uh, concentration and also the peak concentration. So what is the peak concentration and that what is the time to peak concentration? Those are important things, concepts to keep in mind. And then loading dose. Loading dose is give enough mass so that the, the volume of distribution, so whenever you divide the mass by the volume of distribution, you'll be at your target concentration, your concentration steady state. 
And that's it. In just a few minutes, we've, we've reviewed all the pharmacokinetics, essentially, that are important for your, second, your first and second year medical school. There are more things to pharmacokinetics, but each of those things are drug-specific. So as you're learning a specific drug and studying the pharmacodynamics of that drug, if there's something specifically pharmacokinetically important for that drug, then you should study that at the same time. Previously, we talked about enzyme inducers, enzyme inhibitors, enzyme substrates. And I'm, I'm specifically talking about the P450 enzyme, so in, P450 inducers, P450 inhibitors, and the P450 substrates. Those are uh, things that I've already talked about. They're important, but they're also, you can consider them drug-specific. I would try to memorize them in groups, though. So that's it. That's everything. Now what I'm going to do from this point on, you can stop it if you want, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at something. I'm going to show you really that this is all you need to know. We're going to take a look at something from Harrison's uh, Principles of Internal Medicine and show you that everything else is just manipulating the numbers. So Harrison's uh, Internal Medicine, Principles of Internal Medicine, uses this equation. So you don't know what is my concentration. You know, I, I can use this whole equation to figure out what the concentration is. What the heck is this equation? Well, first of all, just know that Harrison is using a little bit different notation than what I've been using so far. So VC is going to be volume of distribution. Harrison says the volume of compartment for which the drug is delivered. The volume of a compartment that a drug is delivered to is the drug's distribution volume. Here, D is not the drug, it's the dosing rate. The dosing rate, which is dose times the fraction over the dosing interval. And C is the concentration at some time. It's not my steady state concentration per se, it's just the concentration at some time. It's saying I gave this dose at this frequency fraction, I gave this dosing rate, and I give it in this volume, what is my current concentration right now? And so I just am going to replace VC with VD in the equation. Now also I want to talk about D, uh, this dosing over the volume of distribution stuff. So I gave somebody a dose and I multiplied it by the vi by available fraction. That's the mass that was injected and that's divided by the volume of distribution. The mass injected divided by the volume of distribution that is going to give me the the concentration, or not concentration, but the concentration at time zero. That is my equation for the concentration at time zero. So I could put concentration at time zero, or I could use the the more general uh, notation form, and I could just replace this uh, this variable. And so now Harrison's is really just telling me that the concentration right now is equal to the concentration at time zero times e to this uh, exponent. Okay, what is this exponent? You remember earlier that we said that the half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over k. So I could just replace the, the, uh, the term half-life with 0 0.693 over k. And that would give me this uh, term right here. So 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.693 over k. And then multiplied by t. That all reduces down to negative kt. So I've taken this whole term and I've changed it to e to the negative kt. So my concentration is equal to my concentration at some time multiplied by e to the negative kt power. Now this looks familiar. This is my first order rate law. Of course it's not written how I've been writing it. It's written right here in the Arrhenius uh, form of the equation. But I could take e, and if I take the natural log of everything, that would get rid of e, and so this is what I would end up with. And I could rewrite it this way, or I could rewrite it this way. This is my first order rate law. So everything, you can see that, that Harrison's gave me this really weird looking equation, but all they did was just manipulate some numbers that so we already know the basic formula, the basic rule. So I'm saying when you see all of these equations at uh, first aid or in, in your study guides or anything, don't, don't be, uh, make it hard on yourself. Don't memorize a million different equations when they're all really just a different form of the same equation. Learn the, the few equations that you need to know and then know how to manipulate those equations. That'll save you a lot of, of memorization.